picture this, you walk into a job interview, but before you even say hello, the interviewer already knows you'll develop heart disease at 45, struggle with depression, and have below average intelligence. Welcome to the world of Gattaca, where your DNA is your destiny. But here's the shocking truth, we're closer to this reality than you might think. Right now, in laboratories around the world, scientists are literally editing the genetic code of human embryos. They're not just preventing diseases anymore, they're enhancing intelligence, selecting eye color, and potentially creating a generation of genetically superior humans. The question isn't whether designer babies are possible. The question is whether we can stop ourselves from creating them. Let's start with what's actually happening in fertility clinics today. Pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, or PGD, is already being used by thousands of couples worldwide. Here's how it works. Doctors fertilize multiple eggs in a lab, then test each embryo's DNA before implanting the healthiest one. Originally developed to prevent devastating genetic diseases like Huntington's or cystic fibrosis, PGD represents our first real step into genetic selection. But here's where things get interesting. While PGD was designed to prevent disease, the technology doesn't distinguish between medical necessity and parental preference. Want a child without the gene for Alzheimer's? That's medical. Want a child with green eyes instead of brown? That's enhancement. The same technology that saves lives can also customize them. The real game changer, though, is CRISPR gene editing. If PGD is like choosing from a menu, CRISPR is like being the chef. This revolutionary tool allows scientists to cut and paste genetic code with unprecedented precision. In 2018, Chinese scientist He Jianquei shocked the world by using CRISPR to edit human embryos, creating the first gene-edited babies. His goal? Making them resistant to HIV. His method? Highly controversial and ethically questionable. The scientific community condemned his work, but the genie was out of the bottle. We now know that editing human embryos is not just theoretically possible, it's been done. The technology exists, it works, and it's getting better every day. So what can we actually edit? The current focus remains primarily medical. Scientists are working on eliminating genes for sickle cell disease, muscular dystrophy, and various forms of inherited blindness. These applications seem straightforward, preventing suffering is universally seen as good. But the line between treatment and enhancement isn't as clear as we'd like. Take intelligence, for example. We know certain genetic variants correlate with higher IQ scores. Is editing these genes treating a cognitive disability or creating an unfair advantage? What about editing genes for height, athletic ability, or even personality traits like aggression? The ethical implications become even more complex when we consider accessibility. Currently, PGD costs tens of thousands of dollars. CRISPR treatments could be even more expensive. If genetic enhancement becomes available, will it only be accessible to the wealthy? Are we creating a genetic class system where your economic status determines not just your opportunities, but your fundamental capabilities? This brings us dangerously close to the Gattaca scenario. In that film, society divided into two classes, the genetically enhanced valets and the naturally conceived invalids. The enhanced got the best jobs, partners, and opportunities, while the unenhanced faced systematic discrimination. It's a chilling vision of genetic apartheid, but there's another side to this story. Imagine being able to guarantee your child will never develop cancer, never struggle with genetic depression, or never face the devastating effects of hereditary diseases. For families who've watched loved ones suffer from preventable genetic conditions, designer baby technology offers hope for breaking cycles of inherited suffering. The scientific community is struggling with these questions right now. Most countries have banned or heavily restricted human embryo editing, but enforcement is challenging. International cooperation is inconsistent, and the technology is becoming more accessible every year. Some scientists argue for a middle path, allowing therapeutic editing while prohibiting enhancement. But defining that boundary proves incredibly difficult. Is improving immune function therapy or enhancement? What about reducing genetic predisposition to addiction or mental illness? Meanwhile, public opinion remains divided. 
Surveys show most people support genetic editing to prevent serious diseases but oppose using it for cosmetic enhancements. However, these attitudes shift when people consider their own potential children. The abstract becomes personal when facing the possibility of preventing your child's suffering. The technology is advancing faster than our ethical frameworks can adapt. CRISPR is becoming more precise, less expensive, and easier to use. New techniques are emerging that could allow even more sophisticated genetic modifications. We're approaching a point where the scientific capability will outpace regulatory oversight. Perhaps most importantly, we need to ask ourselves, what does it mean to be human? If we can edit out genetic predispositions for aggression, are we changing fundamental aspects of human nature? If we enhance intelligence and physical capabilities, are we creating a new species? The future of designer babies isn't science fiction anymore, it's a policy choice we need to make now. The question isn't whether this technology will be developed, but how we'll choose to use it. Will we create the dystopian world of Gattaca, or can we harness genetic editing to reduce suffering while preserving human dignity and equality? What do you think? Should we embrace genetic enhancement or focus only on preventing disease? Share your thoughts in the comments below. This is a conversation that affects all of us. And if you found this exploration of genetic futures fascinating, make sure to subscribe for more videos diving deep into the science shaping our tomorrow. The future is being written in DNA, and we all have a voice in how that story unfolds.